Well, good morning. Welcome to the Journey Church online campus. I'm glad you're here. And I just want to uh, share with you a few things. The first is, uh, actually, I want to share this with you. This is a, yes, it is a tackle box. Of course, it's a tackle box, but it's got their red cross on it because my wife used red tape and put it on there. And when my kids were younger, um, probably right around nine, we noticed that we needed not just a little first aid kit, but a suitcase full of uh, first aid. And so she made this a long time ago. Our kids are adults now, but we kept the suitcase of, of, of repair. Um, we also have another place in our house is like a cabinet full of like all kinds of medicines that we still keep around. And so what is it like for you? Uh, we're going to ask this question in the service. Where do you go? Where do you go um, when you're in physical pain? Uh, do you go to a hospital? Do you go to a doc in a box? Do you call your doctor up? Do you have a taco box of hope like we do? Or do you have a, a medicine cabinet of various, um, like a little drugstore or something like that? Hey, would you share that as we start to kind of get going, just kind of chat with each other? Where do you go when you're in physical pain? Because we're going to talk about pain in general. Before we do, before we start uh, getting into our experience, hey, listen, I want to tell you about our Journey Church app. It is crucial that if you want to connect, that this is something you should download. You can download it from the iTunes Store or from Google Play by searching for the Journey Church VA, and you'll be able to connect with us in lots of different ways using our online Journey card. Uh, you can you can see old media. You can see notes for today's message. There's a lot of great um, links on there, including our links to Catalyst and our JC Kids Ministry, which has videos and such that you can be a minister to your kids while um, maybe you watch this, although I am exciting, you may want to have something for your kids that, that they may enjoy that's also on another device. I'm hoping you'll avail yourself of the Journey Church app, the JC app. It's a, it's a great tool that connects us all together. So having said all that, I'm hoping you'll be in the mind to, to worship today. Last week we talked about surrendering our fear well, this week we're talking about surrendering our pain, and that is a way different uh, ask. But let's just start with surrender as we take time to honor, to think about, to worship God. And feel free to chat in the chat box, where do you go when you have physical pain? Let's get started. Give 
Well, welcome. Welcome to our third message in our series called Bigger Than I Thought. And the idea is this, is that God, God's beauty radiates in all of the circumstances of our life, including the good ones and the bad ones. But when we have tougher circumstances, it's harder to see. When we have fear, when we have pain, when we have doubts, when, when we fail, it's harder to see the goodness of God, His beauty radiating through in those circumstances. So here's something you need to get that if you don't get anything else, this is what I want you to get from this series. God doesn't just want to bless you. He wants to shape you. So a lot of these tough circumstances are used to do that by God. Pain is a particularly hard one for us to wrap our minds around. Pain hurts. And we have this tension between understanding there's a good God and yet there's pain. Let me, let me ask you a question. Where do you go when you have pain? If you have physical pain, do you go to the hospital? Do you go down the street to the emergency care or the dock in the box as some people call it? Do you have a place in your house where there's a medicine cabinet or there's some home remedies or there's some first aid stuff? Do you partake in dubious forms of um, chemical remedies? recreational chemical remedies do you do you participate or take part in unsavory forms of entertainment just to just to kill the pain or avoid the pain or relieve the pain that's a tougher question and then when we talk about spiritual pain which is deep sadness loneliness emptiness deep-seated anger we know something's wrong, we can't quite put our finger on it, but we're in pain. Where do you go then? While all of these things are true and pain can dominate our lives, pain can be a gift. And I know that's a little hard to hear, but think of it like this. There are some people actually born without the ability to feel physical pain. And parents of these, these folks when they're one and two years old, well, it's tough because you have to be hyper vigilant so that they don't get hurt. That's what it's like to be the parent of a child who can't feel pain. It's tough. Pain helps us understand 
where the danger is. And pain can help us understand when something is or is not valuable. Alfred Lord Tennyson said, "'Tis better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all." And while I used to love that romantic line, what it comes down to is this, and this is hard to hear. Sometimes the loss of love helps us understand the true value of the love had we not ever had it. Pain, pain can show us where things are valuable. Pain, pain can tell us where the danger is. And pain can help us to grow. When we have pain and we see someone else in pain and it's similar or maybe we can understand it a little better because we've had it, we can have something called compassion. And literally that word means to suffer with. I find that people who haven't suffered a lot struggle to grow in maturity because compassion is crucial to growing up. It's a crucial to having maturity. Pain can be a gift. But God doesn't want you to live in your pain. He doesn't want you to stay in pain all the time. Pain is supposed to help us to mature, to move on and grow to another level. And the reason that we can go to God with our pain, no matter what it is, is because God is bigger than my pain and yours. And that's what I want to talk about today. Would you pray with me? Well, Father, as we, as we look into your word, as we see what you've written or inspired people to write, those are your words. God, help us to see and understand your great, loyal love. That in spite of our pain, you, Lord, can use our pain to help us grow. In this moment, God, speak to our hearts and draw us to you and let us sense your real love no matter what level of pain we're in today. And Lord, there are some people today who are in, they're in deep spiritual pain. And I'm praying, God, you'll be evident right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the tension between pain and God's goodness is not something Christianity should avoid because Scripture, the Bible, it doesn't avoid it at all. In fact, there's one whole book in Scripture called Lamentations, and all it's about is the tension between God's goodness and pain. Now, to put this all in context, you need to know what God says about himself. So, there's a man who asks God, God, what are you like? His name is Moses, and God declares what he is like. And this is a big deal because God is saying, this is what I'm like. And I want you to hear it. The Lord says this. He pronounces this about himself. He says, the Lord, the, this word Lord is the great I am, is compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in faithful love and truth. Now remember that word faithful love, loyal love. It's this Hebrew word chesed. And chesed is powerful. It means this loyal love. There's no direct translation into any other language, just in Hebrew. It is a powerful, loyal, faithful love. He goes on that God is maintaining this faithful love to a thousand generations, but he will not leave the guilty unpunished. So there's this already a tension between God's faithful, loyal love to a thousand generations but the guilty will not go unpunished. God is just. He is loyally loving. He is just. He is loyally loving. And that brings us to this whole idea about lamentations. See, in lamentations, it's written at a time when a city, a city dedicated to God, a city that was supposed to be his city, a city that was supposed to honor God, where the people were all supposed to be priests, a whole nation of them. And they, as they were blessed, they were supposed to bless others. But what happened was, people being people, they didn't get it right. And instead of honoring God, instead of blessing others, instead of loving God, seeking God, they really thought about themselves. And so they began to indulge in other religions. And some of them were just, just wacky. Some religions were, part of their worship experience was immoral practices during the worship experience. And, oh, it's just If that's not bad enough, there were some that practiced child sacrifice. How did that become thing, something good to do? But the reason people participated in this is that they wanted to bless themselves. 
They practiced in the immoral acts because they were indulging in lust. They practiced child sacrifice because they believed that the blood of their children would make the lands fertile or some such thing as that. What is going on? And God sees this and he sends truth tellers to go, you guys are making a mistake. This is a bad idea. Stop doing this right now. Instead, turn to the God who loyally loves you. He's loyally telling you now, if you stop, I'll, I'll, the land will be blessed. Everything's going to be fine, but stop doing what you're doing. And, and they did. And so God says at some point, after a few hundred years actually, fine. If self-indulgence is what you're going to worship, I'm going to let you have self-indulgence. And he does. And they're invaded by a people who are super self-indulgent. They conquer Jerusalem. They take the people. They make them slaves. They, they kill children. They do all the things to the people that they had been worshiping. They got what they wanted, and it was horrible. And now the city is in pain. And in the book of Lamentations, we can see this, this, this tension coming out because some, not all the people figured out why God is doing what he's doing. They're, they're wrestling with this, but you're a good God. How can there be this pain? And in the middle of this book, because there are five voices, there's a voice from a particular man. Maybe it was Jeremiah. It's hard to say. Maybe it was his scribe Baruch. But there's a voice of a man who's wrestling with this whole idea of pain. And he says this. He says, I am a man who has seen the affliction under the rod of God's wrath. Now, God's wrath is not like I'm angry and now I'm going to hit you. God's wrath is like, I can't do anymore. I'm going to back out. You won't listen. I'm going to back out. And this is what he means by God's wrath. God's wrath is, I'm going to let you go and you do what you want to do. I, I've, I love you and this is your choice. I'm the man who's seen the affliction under God's, the rod of God's wrath. He has driven me away and forced me to walk in darkness instead of light. Yet he repeatedly turns his hand against me all day long. Do you ever feel like that? Do you ever feel like you're in that place and your pain is so great? You're like, God has turned his back on me. He is forcing me to walk in darkness. There was a time in my life when the emotional pain was so great that it felt hard to breathe. I'll never forget it. It was a, it was just, it felt like, it literally felt like there was a spear in my chest through my heart. And it wasn't like a stabbing pain. It was sort of like a dull pain. And when I breathe, this is just an emotional feeling of great loss. And when I, it hurt to breathe, it was, it was so hard. I've never had a great physical pain that was incapacitating, but I have a friend who did, and I asked him to describe his physical pain. Here's what he said, and I quoted him. I describe it as a stabbing, shooting pain, like walking on pins and needles or knives, pretty much to the point of not being able physically to be on my feet for more than a few seconds. The whole thing was pretty depressing and definitely difficult to find any motivation to do anything. Pain dominates. It takes up the landscape. And here was this, this was a young man in this kind of pain. And he couldn't do anything. Have you been there? Are you there? This man in Jerusalem, he's there. And he, he says to God, you've done these things to me. He says, you've, you, God, you pierced my kidneys. God, you filled me with bitterness. God, you ground my teeth up with gravel. God, you made me cower in the dust. God, you deprived me of peace. All of these things this man lays on God, yet knowing he knows the truth that God has let the people have their way. And it's hitting him that, oh my gosh, we've abandoned God. This is our result. And then he says this. He says, then I thought my future is lost as well as my hope from the Lord. My future is lost as well as my hope from the Lord. So I just want to take a second and say, if you're in that kind of pain, if you're in that kind of pain, please don't try to do this by yourself. I want to talk about some ways you can respond 
where God comes into the picture. But listen, don't do this by yourself. Because God, in His loyal love, wants to bring hope and healing and wholeness into your life. God, in His cassette, His, His wonderful, faithful, loyal love, He wants to bring hope and and healing and wholeness. And this writer, he knows, he remembers that scripture that we've read where God said, you know, I'm gracious, merciful, slow to anger, and I have loyal, faithful love, and I'm just. And so the man looks at the landscape and he says, oh my gosh, he is just. He must be faithfully loving too. And so the man in pain cries out, because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish, for His mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So I say, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will put my hope in Him. Wherever you are in your pain, you need to, maybe you need to write this down. Maybe in your pain you need to write this down. You, in the darkest moment you may say, you know what, I know I'm in pain and I don't know why, but because of the Lord's faithful love, I'm not going to perish, for His mercies never end. They are new every morning, tomorrow's a new day, and I'm going to make it. Great is your faithfulness, God. I say that the Lord is my portion and I will put my hope in Him. I don't know where you are or what's going on in your life, but maybe you need to write down Lamentations 3, 22 through 24. Write on a card and put it there. And when, you're, when the hour seems dark, read this because it's true about who God is. There was another time I was in deep emotional pain, so much pain. I was like, I'm in my office upstairs in my house and I'm filming this and I was on the floor right here face down because I thought it's what you're supposed to do when you're in deep emotional pain. And I'm praying to God, would you please, would you please send me, just tell me something. And I, you know, I was getting up and you're not supposed to do this, but I opened the Bible up like God would speak to me through the Bible and I went to divinity school and realized that that doesn't happen. But there it was this scripture that I knew God gave to me. Here it is. For the Lord does not reject us forever. Even if He causes suffering, He will show compassion according to the abundance of His faithful, loyal love. God loves you with an everlasting love. God wants to bless you, but more importantly, He wants to shape you. And so when we look at this tension between God's love and God and our pain, there's some things I want to I want to share with you. Number one is this, is that there is always hope in God's loyal love. This writer, David, says, Even though I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And he's speaking to God like God is a shepherd. In fact, he begins this scripture. He says, The Lord is my shepherd. I don't have to worry about anything. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I don't fear any danger for you're with me. Even though you're in your deepest pain, call on him, God is with you, walking with you. He doesn't deliver you every time from your pain, but he will go through it with you. And remember that the Son of God who is God, he, he had to go through intense suffering. God is with you. He will comfort you. Second thing I want to tell you about God's love and our pain is that our pain has purpose in Christ who also suffered. We can look at him and see how God uses suffering for greatness, for goodness, for our good, for the good of others. Our pain always has purpose in Christ. And so this writer says he comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction. Through the comfort of ourselves, through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Now, we then, when we suffer, we are able to have compassion for others. God uses our suffering as a blessing to others. Isn't that crazy? Here's the thing about Christ. For just as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, His weakness, His humanity, his suffering has connected him to us in ways that we can't imagine. So also through Christ, our comfort overflows. We have a king, a God, a Lord who knows what we feel like because he's been like us. 
The third thing I want to tell you about God's pain versus our love is this, is that pain is the place where God's strength shows up. And so Peter writes, Peter, the friend of Jesus, Peter, who had seen Jesus, who had who understood him to be God and human, says that the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. It's never over. There's always hope. My favorite one, though, is this. God shows up in your pain. And this man had been in pain many times. And listen to what this man, Paul, this different man, writes about, about weaknesses and, and pain and suffering. He says, So I take pleasure in weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am in pain, my God is with me, walking with me, strengthening me. You don't know who's watching you as you walk through your pain. I've seen people have conditions and I'm amazed at their strength. And they'll tell me when I talk to them, it's like, it's not me. It is the God who is with me. When you are in pain, you can call on the God who walks with you and his strength. It radiates through the broken cracks of our lives. So let me talk about surrendering. Last week I said we surrender our fear to God. It is an act of worship. Well, listen to me. Surrendering our pain to God is an act of worship. Here's how you can do that. Number one, lament in prayer with God. Take your real, raw, open, hurting heart to God. Lament in prayer to God. It's okay. You don't have to have your stuff perfect before God. He knows you anyway. Take your open heart, your hurting heart, your angry heart, your, your sorting heart. Take it straight to God who loves you. Secondly, Share your burdens of pain with your trusted Christian friends. This is the reason we have journey groups, so that we can invest in building one another, so that we can pray for each other and grow and be healed. James, the brother of Jesus, says this about the community of believers. He says, therefore, confess your sins to one another. Now, a lot of people say, they're like, I don't want to confess my sins. Well, when you have trusted Christian friends who are holding you accountable, you can talk about your brokenness, your pain, your sin, your mistake, your struggles. You can take it all to those who love you in a community of believers who you can trust and pray for one another. Why? So that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. And we are not righteous because we do good things. We are righteous because of the one who is in us. So the people who are gathered together who are in Christ are righteous in him. And we can pray for each other. And there is healing. And the God of all love, the God who is loyally loving, can take our pain and use it to grow us. We become compassionate and mature. We see danger. We understand value because the God of all love understands our pain. He, who became flesh as Jesus, suffered just like us. He understands we don't have a God who is unsympathetic, but one who knows every fiber of what we feel. So here's the big thing today as we worship together. What are the, what are the things that you need to bring to God? If we can say, take a lament in prayer to God, if we can say that, then what is it that you need to pray about a day that's causing you pain? And maybe that's not true for you, but if it is, it's appropriate to take your raw, hurt heart to God. He loves you. He wants to comfort you. Here's the second thing I want you to consider. Do you want someone to pray with you? We said that praying with others, sharing our burdens, is a part of who we are supposed to be as followers of Christ. So here online, we have a couple of ways to do that. Number one, you can click on the live prayer button. And we have prayer guides who will pray with you. If you would like to uh, click on the link for our journey card, you can write us and tell us what you want us to pray for. And we will not only pray that prayer, we'll send the prayer to you so we can pray with you. 
but don't let the day go by where if you're in pain, you don't reach out to God. And there may be all kinds of physical, emotional, and spiritual pain you're going through. Don't be afraid to get professional help if you need it. Because sometimes we just can't do it alone. With all of that in mind, know this, that the God of faithful, loyal love wants to be with you. And he will use your pain to grow you if you walk with him. So as we sing this next song, as we hear this next worship experience, let it be your worship experience as you surrender your pain to God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies to all my fears are gone. I'm no longer slave.
powerful when we open our hearts to God we actually we can perceive his love flowing into us giving our our hearts to God surrendering our hearts our real open hurting hearts I think we can sense the presence of God as he pours in and I hope that's happening to you today listen I said that Jesus lived and then he suffered. You should know Jesus died, but he didn't stay dead. He rose from the grave. He lives now. He, he reigns as king with God, who is God. And he has done this. You know why he's done this? He's done this because of God's unfailing, loyal love. And all you have to do to receive that love is receive it. Here's, here's an easy way to do that. This is one way that you can do it. You can just pray. And a prayer might be like this. So I'll pray this prayer. Maybe you'll pray it with me. Heavenly Father, I don't know why, but I believe Jesus is that, that he lived and he died on the cross and he rose from the grave and with all the things in my life, I've got nothing. So I'm depending on you, Lord. You come into my life. I'm asking you to come into the place that I'm at, into my pain, and walk with me. I need your hope. I need you as my hope. I need your healing. I need you as my healing. I, I want to be whole, God. Step into my life. I trust you. I give you my life. It has to die. And Lord, raise me up in a new life. I pray this. I pray this in, in the name of the one that I'm banking all this on, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer, would you let us know? We want to send you some really easy next steps. And I'm hoping that, I'm hoping your life following Jesus will be a radical change from living in pain, understanding that, that God is bigger than your pain. And if you have been delivered from some kind of pain or you're, you've seen God act in your life and you're following Jesus and you've been following Him for some time, you belong to the church with a capital C. And you cannot sit on this. You have to tell others. If God uses this Sunday morning online broadcast to help if it helped you and you want to share it with others do it if you want to invite people next sunday we'll be back here again next sunday at 10 do it but here's what i want you to understand this is not about what we do now it is about you from here on the rest of the week you are to go and tell people about this god who is amazing because church you are sent mm -hmm.